Good morning. Hi moms, I hope you had a great weekend. If not, I'm so sorry. But this is Monday Motivations. This is October 24th, 2022. I can't believe it's already almost the end of October already. But um, today I want to talk with you and encourage you and my choice that I made was choices. That's the word, choices. The dictionary says that it is to select, it is an option, it is an opportunity to choose, you know, and we make choices all day long. But it is a gift from God. It truly is because I am so glad that he gave us the will, a will, to make choices that we are not all robots. So we make them all day long, right? Um, just think about it. From the time that you get up, from the time that your feet hit the floor, you are making choices. And uh, some are unconscious, some are very conscious, and some we have to really think about it. But uh, depending on the weather, you make a choice on how you will dress or how you will dress your children or grandchildren, you know, how you will go out in the world, uh, whether to, um, you know, wear sandals or to wear rain boots or and take an umbrella, you know, you're making all these choices. Uh, what about breakfast? Coffee? Well, duh, yes, always coffee. <laughs> and in the wintertime, sometimes it's more coffee and hot drinks than in the summertime. Um, but you make choices whether to uh, eat all those carbs or not, or whether to go on yet another diet or not, whether to exercise, work out, yoga, pickleball, tennis, swimming, walking, jogging, running, you know, whatever it is that you do or you don't do, you are making choices. Um, you know, in not making a choice, you've already made one, right? So I want to talk to you today a little bit about choices and give you some verses uh, because no matter where we are on this journey, I mean, that's the reason why we're here, ladies, in this Moms Letting Go and in the Almighty Moms Tribe because our addicted loved ones have made their choices and it's made us make our choices. And I am so glad that you are here in this group to get some kind of support because we all need it. We need each other. So with that, I'm going to be telling you some verses here, give you a little bit of homework because I want you to grow. I want you to not be stuck. Um, I am Lucretia Renee Talley. If you don't know that by now, because we do have a lot of new moms coming and joining every day, I am your unhackable coach. I am your self-care coach, and I am your next step coach. So you will be seeing more and more of me and my lovely face to um, encourage you and to support you. And if you need to reach out to me or to even join the Albany Moms Tribe, then please do that because you care, you matter, you do. And so, one of the things that has helped me is to renew my mind daily. And how do you do that? By staying in God's Word. And the Holy Spirit will renew your mind. Just like we want our addicted loved ones to renew their mind in whatever stage that they are at on their journey, we want them to renew their mind. We want their mind to be rid of the uh, addiction and to see them in a, a healthy light, right? Well, God wants that for them as well. And just to remind you that God loves your son or daughter or your grandchildren. He loves them more than you do. And I know that's hard for a mama's heart, but it helped me also to stay on track and to know that God loves them more than than we do, than I do, and that he has their best intentions in mind. So, um, you know, we do have a choice to obey God or not. 
to honor him. But this is scriptural. He tells us to honor him and to obey him and to delight in him and he will delight in us. Draw near to, draw near to him and he will draw near to us. Uh, Romans 12, 2 says, Do not conform to the patterns of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. So get information. If you don't know what your next step is, then just get wisdom. God tells us to do that. Get information on whatever it is that you're struggling with that you want to know more about because it, it's out there. There is information out there. And knowledge is so powerful, and it helps us to understand uh, where our addicted loved ones are and how we can help, not enable, but how we can help, what we can do, what we can't do. And um, Psalms 37, 23 says, the Lord makes firm the steps of the one who delights in him. It's a choice to choose Jesus, and when you do, he will make your steps firm. Um, you know, we, we are free to choose between good and evil, and that started from the get-go. It started when God put Adam and Eve in the garden, and he told them, you know, to eat anything and everything in the garden but this tree of good and evil. And you know, it's just like our kids, you tell them not to do something, they can do all this other stuff, but not to do this, and that's the one that they gravitate to, right? So um, anyway, they did, uh, Adam and Eve ate of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, and then they were banished from the garden, and you know, sin entered the world, and choices, it was choices for sure. Um, but God loved us first, and love is a choice. So it's also an action. And love takes work. It takes time to maintain. And that is a whole new topic <laughs> in itself, is love. And we just don't have enough time to talk about that right here. But um, God gives us the freedom to choose in freedom to make our own choices. We have that freedom to obey him or not, to choose him or reject him, to walk in his will or not. Uh, Corinthians 10 31 says, so whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, that whatever encompasses life, okay? Whatever you do, do all to the glory of God. So that tells me that um, all your choices need to be uh, deliberate, they need to be good, they need to be wise, you know, be kind. And I know you've heard that if you can't be anything else, be kind. Be kind in your speech, be kind in how you serve others. Um, Galatians 5.13 says, for you are called to freedom, only do not turn your freedom into an opportunity for the flesh, but through love, serve one another. And this is what we do here in this group and in the Almighty Moms tribe. It, we serve one another and we are learning every day how to serve in, um, you know, a new way, a different way, a better way. So we are growing. We are ladies and we are seeing a lot of results with our moms and uh, the choices that they are making with their addicted loved ones. And you know, it's, um, you got to think about this a little bit because how you choose to speak to your addicted loved one makes a big difference. And the choices that you are making and how you are choosing self-care and you're not enabling them, you're making good choices. Um, and they notice that. For instance, um, I've, I've read just this morning where you know, this, there's always a question of, well, he or she is going into rehab. What do, what do we do with all their stuff? They're going to lose all their stuff. They can't just leave their stuff there, right? So, so what do you do as a mom? Do you go pick it all up? Do you put it in storage? Do you not do anything with it and just let the, um, 
landlord or the uh, managers just get rid of it? What do you do? That, that is a big question. That's a choice. And depending on your situation as to what you might do. Now, we will never tell you what to do, but we can tell you how it's worked for many of us, you know, whether to go get it or not. And, um, you know, that's, that's your choice that you have to make. I have done both. I have not gotten it, and then I have. But the times that I have gotten uh, their things, I, and when they were sober, that it was good, and they appreciated me getting their things. Uh, a lot of times their clothes won't fit because uh, when they are, uh, you know, they go to rehab and um, they're not uh, using anymore, uh, they're not, you know, their substance abuse um, is, is gone and they're healing and they're getting good food and they gain weight and so they need new clothes, right? So, um, you know, it's just something to ponder and something to think about. So, um, you know, get a buddy. Get someone that can pray with you about these hard decisions. Um, and that's how we serve one another. Uh, James 1.5 says, Ask God for wisdom and discernment, and he will give it to you. And Ephesians 5.15 says, Walk not as unwise, but as wise. So be intentional with your choices. And um, I want to give you another picture because this is one thing that I experienced uh, with my son because he was in county jail for uh, a long time and then he was processed to go to prison. And so he went through different, different systems there before he landed in prison where he was going to be for several years. And um, in prison you wear either the white t-shirt and white pants or it's the orange jumpsuit or the striped, wherever, you know, you are. Uh, it could be different clothing. So, um, but I saw uh, my son whenever he was released that uh, they did give him some pants and he just had on his white t-shirt. And the first thing he wanted to do was to get new clothes, right? He wanted to put off the old and bring on the new. So I want to give you some homework today for this week. I want you to think about this. And it's in Ephesians 4, uh, 17 through 32. A new you. That's what I call it, a new you, okay? So um, you're going you're gonna to put off all the darkness uh, the dark thinking and controlled by all of the, the worldly greed and the hard heart. And you're going to put off the old self and you're going to put on the new self. Just like it would be a new identity. It would be new clothes, okay? Um, you know, some of your old things may feel good. They may feel comfortable. Um... But um, sometimes you need some new. You need some new things, right? Clean out your closet. So it's just like my son. He wanted new clothes. And he felt like he had, you know, a new start and a new identity. And we need to put off, put off all the, the lies and the false and the anger and and staying stuck. We need to move forward. And sometimes you have to put on um, the newness of your mind and to put on kindness, to, to actually put it on. And, you know, forgiveness. There's so much here, ladies, that we could talk about, but we're, we're out of time. I've gone over. One thing I want to leave you with, though, is to uh, study Ephesians 4. And whatever your speech is today, um, you know, our words are very powerful. Speak pure and encouraging words. Let this be a um, deliberate thing that you will do today, is to get rid of that bitterness and hateful speech and just be careful of what you are saying. 
uh, who you're saying it to and speak words of kindness and smile and you will be surprised as to how that lifts your mood, the serotonin levels in your brain and um, just, just do it, just do it and see how that makes you feel. So, okay, that's enough for today. Uh, love you ladies, have a great week and I will see you for Fun Friday. Bye.